Good morning. It is Sunday, November 19th, 2017. This is the Bulldog Unchained Podcast. I'm your host, the King of Villains, Bulldog Malenko. And joining me, as usual, is Nubsy Slow. Cha-chow. <laughs> Dirt Nap Dave is uh, out of town in Colorado this week. Uh, yeah. Evidently, he's at the airport now, getting ready to leave. <laughs> and uh, he called us before we started recording. Wish us good luck and shit. Yeah, and and to let us know that he had to go through security twice because he left his fucking carry-on luggage at at the security checkpoint because he's high as hell. <laughs> oh shit! That was what great. a goon! That shit was great. So, uh, yeah. Mohawk's back. I see that. I had, it, it was time, man. I had to <clears throat> doing the branding thing. You know, the logo I gotta kind of look like the logo. You gotta be a twin, That's right? Yeah. So, uh, what's been going on this week, man? In life, yeah. Well, there's a whole lot of shit. Yeah. A lot of different things happening. Like what? Are you in my life? Yeah. God. I thought you meant what's happening. No, no, tell me about Steve from down the street. <laughs> I know him, what? man, but I don't want to talk about him. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> I mean, I thought you meant like what's going on in the world. Like, uh, just throwing a lot of shows together for next year. And uh, the ones that I'm on, ones that we're all on, the ones that What's Wrong With You Man's on. And uh, hoping we set this shit off right where we can uh, not have to go to a nine to five anymore. That's the main goals for next year. Right. So that's what my main focus is on. Well, right now, I want to talk about something that has to do with that. So, if you don't know, the Bulldog Unchained podcast now has t-shirts available for pre-order. You need to go to our Facebook page, Bulldog Unchained podcast Facebook page. You'll find the post. Um, it is this, The details, the, the instructions are very specific. We only have this one avenue to do the pre-orders. It is through PayPal. Uh, you click the link. If you're in the U.S., it is $20 plus $5 shipping for a t-shirt. Uh, the design is there. You can see it. Uh, the logo is going to be really huge on the front. It's awesome. Tucker is hooking that up nicely. But when it comes to ordering, if you are outside of the U.S., you need to contact us through Messenger on Facebook to let us know where you're at so we can give you an accurate shipping amount. If you don't and you place an order, your order will be canceled. You All don't right. want that. You want no. one of these days. So go right now, right now, get on Facebook. Go to the Bulldog Unchained podcast. Find the t-shirt pre-order uh, post. Make sure that when you click the link and you and you go to pay for the shirt in the comment or the, the message that you can send with the payment, list your shirt size and your mailing address. Now, the pre-order is going to run until December 31st, and then the orders should start being filled around the third week of January and shipped out. Yeah. So... We're going to get you quick as possible. Make sure that everybody gets one that wants one. Right. And these are the first edition Bulldog Unchained shirts. Um, the pre-orders are, are for that reason only. I may have another run done once we get the pre-orders fulfilled. I may have like a limited run printed up to have available, but that's not a certainty. So... Once the pre-order's done, I mean, you you may have missed out. Oh shit! Should we sign them? Like all like all no, the time? No, no, we don't need to sign them. You think so? No, because then people won't want to wear it. They'll be like, man, look at these valuable ass signatures on these on these t-shirts. We can't wear these. Yeah, how am I gonna wear this to a club? Outside, right. Man? Somebody spills a drink on it. That's fucked. Ruins that nubsy slow clean si- the, that signature. It's like messing up a new pair of J's. Oh. I don't want to do that. It's tragic. You put that shit it's on the tragic. wall. That's tragic. Yeah. You, you, you can't have that. No, nah, you don't want that shit. But anyway, yeah. Go right now. Go order a t-shirt. All right? Help support the show. And you get a cool kick-ass shirt on the front. It's got the Bulldog Unchained logo, the face logo that looks like me. And look, I got my mohawk back now, so yeah. I actually look like the fucking logo again, the spikes. Yeah. 
And on the back, it says it has the Bulldog Unchained podcast logo. And it was badass. Like, yeah. It's uh, fucking sweet. I can't wait to get one. You got to look real close. There's a little like hidden gem in there if you look. Okay. Yeah. I had to look really close. But it, like, Well, you, on the t-shirt, it'll show up yeah. really nice. You were looking at a small image. Yeah, I was going to so, have to zoom in. Yeah. Even then, I still didn't see it. <laughs> Is that the fuck you talking about? You blind. I know. Like man. me. I got the fucking glasses on. <laughs> I fucking got beer goggles 24 7. Right? So, uh, while I'm thinking about the social media, you can follow us on Twitter at B Dog Unchained, um, Instagram at Bulldog Unchained, and uh, yeah. Facebook. And uh, yeah, yeah. And, and on the Bulldog Unchained <laughs> podcast page for Facebook. Now, if you're listening on iTunes, I think you can subscribe there. If you listen on Podbean, click subscribe. Also, click that like button. If you're on YouTube, uh, click the thumbs up, click the subscribe button, help our audience grow, and share this. Share this on social media. And talk to us. Yeah, yes. Engage with what we post, especially on the Bulldog Unchained Facebook page. Yeah. Like, I'm... I'm always on there, and you get on there, and Dirt Nap gets on there. We, we yeah. will talk to you. We will say some shit to you. We were like, "What do you want to hear? You want us to talk dirty to you?" We will not one eight hundred nine one one call your ass. <laughs> Pick up the phone. We got you. We got it. <laughs> it's ninety nine cents a minute though for me, and the mother two are free. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm just saying, I got a high commodity when it comes to my time, man. Time is money. I charge that. That's some bullshit. No, you got. Yeah, how you gonna give me out for free? I mean, dirt nap. I understand. Dirt nap. Fuck. He doesn't yeah. even show up. Like, he's not even here. He's goddamn like, empty chair over there. That fucking moves, and it says, "God damn!" Over that direction, I'm gonna flip shit. <laughs> I don't like ghost. <laughs> you worried about them ghosts? Huh? I'm worried about ghosts. Like, hardcore. <laughs> like, I watch scary movies at night by like one a.m. I'm like, oh fuck, I'm fucking ghosts. Speaking of uh, movies and shit like that, so, <clears throat> dude, Netflix, The Punisher. Have you seen any of it yet? Uh, my Netflix thing got canceled because I didn't pay my payment, so <laughs> I gotta re, I gotta like repay my shit. I haven't seen it yet. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Poor folk. Nubs is a deadbeat with Netflix. <laughs> he, he didn't pay his child support payment to Netflix, so mm-hmm. he don't get to see them kids. I got Netflix. I just can't watch Netflix. <laughs> anyway, The Punisher is badass. I've seen the previews for it, though. John Bernthal is, I mean, he was already great as The Punisher, but this, this is, and it, it's amazing. And, like, each episode, it's a good story build, but then there are, like, five to ten minutes near the end of the episode that are just pure fucking brutality Damn, yeah was he the guy the same guy in the movie the punisher thomas no no, no that was thomas jane yeah, yeah no 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 this is the dude that played shane in the walking dead i haven't seen that show never no oh man you didn't watch daredevil or anything i watched it i got to the sewer scene in daredevil where we had the m616 so you didn't see punisher I haven't seen Punisher. I've seen the previews for it, like the trailer. Yeah, okay. I've seen a movie Punisher. No. So this is a show on Stop Netflix. Stop going back to that. That's a good movie. No, it's it's okay. This this blows out away. Oh, it's, shit. You serious? Yeah. I got to get my re-up on. Yeah. Looking, for real. And then there's another show called Mindhunter. Oh, man. I heard you talk about that. Oh, Sick. Don't you get they, it's a great show? Getting ahead of the criminals. Uh, basically, it shows you the evolution of like profiling and like serial killer, like how uh, it was uh, Robert Ressler and I can't remember the other guy's name, but they were basically the fathers of profiling, and just through patterns and behaviors and things like that, they were able to pinpoint who these people would be. That's dope. Yeah. It's pretty slick but yeah it's a really good show it's intense yeah i'll check that one out too um other than that that's pretty much all i've had time to see really watched nxt last night it was great oh yeah see in almas new nxt champion pretty sure drew mcintyre is getting called up quick yeah he'll probably be on like raw maybe who knows (laughs) <laughs> that shit was dope dude 
Alistair Black and Velveteen Dreams match was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I thought when I first saw Velveteen Dream, I thought, man, this dude is just going to be a knockoff prince. But then I saw him last night. Well, today when I got home from work, I was like, holy fucking hell balls. This dude just fucking rocked it out with him. Yeah, he's a... Uh, I saw him when he first, like, debuted with that character. Before he was on TV, we saw him at a house show. and It was kind of weird. We were just like, who are you? What are you trying to be? And he's really established and found that character and created something that uh, I think has more depth than a lot of other character types uh, that, are, know, that are on there right now. You can broaden it out quicker. Oh yeah. it. I mean he reminds me of it's like Prince meets Ravishing Rick Rude. It's pretty <laughs> sweet. <It's, laughs> yeah motherfuckers want some pancakes. <laughs> While I gyrate my hips. <laughs> wow. So anyway, let's talk about uh, let's talk about some news shit. Oh. So now you got studio executives and like Harvey Weinstein and oh, yeah. all these people. Now you got uh, Kevin. Pol- political figures. Political figure. Oh, snap. Yeah, dude. There's people trying to run for senator and all this. There's a dude trying to run for senator of Alabama who... Roy Moore. Yeah, who molested, like, teenage girls. Come on, homie. He was banned from the mall. That's real. That is serious. He And that's when he was the, like, assistant, dis, or, uh, yeah, assistant district attorney or something like that. Yeah. He was banned from the mall. He like he couldn't go there. You, mama, you, you assistant to Harvey Dent, and you fucking up. <laughs> you serious? <laughs> the, the fuck wrong with you, man? It's and the, what's worse is there are people that are like, well, I acknowledge that he was most likely a pedophile. <laughs> no, it wasn't most likely. Well, no, but I mean these are allegations right now. But oh, that's probably true. But uh. There are literally people saying, but I'll still vote for him because he's the he's the best option. That's sad. At what point do you rationalize in your head that a pedophile is the, is the best option? Who the fuck is an opposing <laughs> motherfucking running? And now, uh, Al Franken. Oh, Senator sad. Al Franken. Yeah, dude, this, this lady, this model said that he assaulted her. Which she said, this, this cracks me up. She was like, um, I forgive him or I, I forgive him completely and don't hold any grudge or something like that. And I'm like, bitch, you lied. What you just did is completely the opposite of forgiving and not holding a grudge. You literally waited 20 years to bring this up. Now that the man's a senator and now that all these people are telling their shit and hers was he he kissed her and slipped her the tongue but they were rehearsing for a skit okay uh, for real so it was a, so it was pretty much him in the moment of the of the <laughs> Dude, who knows but i look at it this way you know you know how many posts a day i see from women on social media talking about they can't find a man and you know why isn't anyone interested in me blah blah bitch they might be but now they're too goddamn terrified to ever approach you because you might file sexual harassment or assault charges on them i know i'm scared to say something right it, it comes to now i'm like dude if i were single how the fuck would i approach this now no oh, man there's a video of a girl walking in Brooklyn and the dude on the garbage truck says hi yeah and she goes off yes I've seen it like, fucking insane like what the hell like she goes off on him he said hello how are you doing literally that is what he said and she starts yelling that that's sexual assault no bitch eat a fucking shotgun it's not like just deep throat it <laughs> for real. Like this sh- shit's getting out of hand. And the problem is you have people that have legitimate 
stories. They have legitimate assaults that happen to them. But now, because everyone wants to be a victim and everyone wants to make everything so goddamn grandiose, it's going to make people just not take all of it seriously now again. It's going to kill every emotion that it had going forward. Right. Like, it was started off strong. Yeah. Now it's like when I was talking about it's like when I was talking about the uh the Me Too movement. Um Yeah, it's so. you got people you had people then in that that were turning it into to male bashing. And well, that's not really the best way to get your target audience on board with you. No. Nah. Because, yeah, that's great that you want to empower women to step forward and speak their peace. But if you can't also get men together to care about this cause, well, I mean, what, are you, what are you doing? Yeah. I mean, I would think that part of the main target would be, hey, look, this is what's happening in which I, I can acknowledge that it happens, absolutely. But the way that some people act about it may completely... It's kind of like the liberal conservative thing. I'm completely turned off to either side. I am. I'm just... Fuck both of them. But with each other, well, when someone expresses those conservative viewpoints, if, if the person they're talking to is a liberal... That person shuts their brain off and completely disregards everything they have to say. And vice versa. Yeah. Well, it's the same fucking thing that you're doing if you alienate men from the Me Too movement. And now all of these allegations coming out and you have women that have legitimately been subjected to sexual assaults and rapes and sexual misconduct and things like that. And then you have women who might be exaggerating a bit yeah. or flat out lying. That told hello and got overreacted. Right. Like, uh, what was it? Terry, Terry Crews. He had, he was an issue one. Something happened with him. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. Like, and he's big as fuck. Like who the fuck is on fuck with Terry Crews? Yeah. This dude did it. And, but again, when a lot of this happened when all the people were like 20 years ago in 1990s and, when like if you did something like a woman got done something by a man it would have probably got swept under the rug something like that a lot of it <laughs> he had to read that shit right by the door. oh yeah absolutely um a lot of it does get swept under well and the other thing is a lot of women don't come forward yeah when things like this happen which I don't mean this to sound negative, but that's on them. That if you don't want to come forward, okay. But coming forward 20, 30 years later and trying to make it like it's a current issue. I mean, look, I that's great that you came forward and spoke about it. But it's not a pressing issue now because how are you going to prove it? Now it's just you saying something. Yeah. What proof do you have? Like the, um, that's the problem if you decided to let something go and bury it sometimes maybe it needs to stay buried because what what are you accomplishing after 20 30 years and i'm not saying that they shouldn't come for it. i'm saying they should i'm saying that any woman that genuinely is sexually assaulted or raped or experiences sexual misconduct in the workplace or something come forward fucking speak up they don't be afraid, yo. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, seriously, it's... That's the only way that things like this will get handled. And it has to be done in a timely manner. Right. You can't go 20, 30 years and then be like, oh, well, this person did this to me back in 1986. Yeah. No. What? I mean... That'd be within the first 24 if hours. It's, if it's real, that sucks. That's awful, but... There's a whole lot of shit happening right now that police can't deal with. Attorneys and judges are getting wrong. And you think that they're going to be able to go back to a 20 or 30 year old case 
and get these things right. Yeah. It's you're I mean, and the other thing is <clears throat> so you may accomplish exposing this person, but again, and and yeah, you may get them hung in the court like found guilty in the court of public opinion. But we all have seen too that all a woman has to do in today's day and age is point the finger at you and say your name and that you did this and you're fucked. Yeah. But part of that, part, part of the problem that comes with that is there are a lot of people that dismiss it. It's just like, no, because when the follow up is done, a lot of these charges are dropped or you find out later that the news didn't want to cover. Oh, well, this person lied and a countersuit was filed against them for slander and defamation of character. And they had to pay out tens of thousands of dollars because they lied about someone. Granted, that person's reputation now forever has that word rape or whatever associated with it. But if you dig a little bit, you will find that a lot of these have happened where people were just it was discovered that they were lying and then the person that they lied about sued them and rightfully so yeah because you're playing a game with someone's life and potentially their livelihood and their ability to support themselves and their character and not only that you're making it almost impossible for women who have been raped or been assaulted you're making it impossible for them to be taken seriously and for their situation to be dealt with the one that was um in the Stanford guy, when she got it, she got raped, and then he got a sentence of like six months because the judge didn't want. Oh yeah, the swimming dude or yeah, whatever. yeah, right and yeah, because he didn't want to ruin this man's uh, like career life. Yeah. What about was, the what about the girl? Yeah, that one. I was like, hold on, you have an open and shut case. Like it's like it is the, the DNA evidence was there. And she went like right to afterwards. She yeah, went. yeah. She went and reported it immediately, and he got six months of house arrest. Yeah, I believe is what it was. I do want to if it was locked down, it'd been like so. You know. Like what? That's but you have men that have been accused of rape, put in prison. And some were found later that they didn't commit it. Or how many people are sitting in, in a jail cell or a prison cell that have been accused of this and just for whatever reason or another, if they didn't do it, but they're there. Oh, the innocence. Yeah. That's probably a lot. Just the police have somebody just to put the rap on because they can't solve the case. So oh, they, yeah. That's why I'm like, what? Find but room. again, I, I honestly, I, I feel that any woman that is assaulted or raped should absolutely, I mean, look, yes, it's humiliating. Yes, it's embarrassing. That's awful. But you need to go to the hospital immediately, especially if you've been raped, you need to go to the hospital. Yeah. Have a rape kit. Don't even perform. shower. You got to. Yeah. You, gotta you go need straight. to go straight there. All the evidence still there, so they know they can catch the guy quickly. Absolutely, absolutely, and it's it's just astounding to me that so many people just decide to live with it. And with all these women coming forward, there are women that have flat out just come out and said, "Look, I've had things happen to me, but I don't feel the need to drudge it up twenty, thirty years later." Because it's not going to do any good. They make a point. Yeah. But also, get it off your chest. Some people don't need to. I mean, some people, yeah, they're, they're going to have bad regressions and things like that. And But some people can just deal with massive amounts of trauma. And just roll with life bad shit happened to me I'm not gonna let it fucking rule my life 
you know it's like me yeah. i i mean i wasn't raped that i know of i don't think i was molested i don't i'm not sure there are things from my childhood that i have questions about but they're fragmented but the awful shit that happened to me with my mother and stepfather i just i can't let it rule my life you know what i mean yeah like it's it it's not conducive to what i'm doing now it, it's not helping propel my life forward at all and I, i've had people tell me that when they listened to the three-part series of rob walter versus bulldog malenko that they were just blown away and that they got a deeper understanding into who i am and you know why I say and do the things that I do or even used to. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I wasn't, I didn't do those shows to get everything off my chest. I literally said everything that I was saying just because I was giving chronology of my life because people were interested. Like when I was doing 30 minutes of mayhem, uh, that was one of the topics that someone suggested was the differences between Rob and bulldog. And then a whole bunch of people commented on it and they were, uh, they were just like, Oh my God, this is amazing. This could be its own show. And they hit me. I was like, man, maybe I just need to do a three part series of that. And basically be a four part series. Yeah. It it should have had a part four. I just, I was going to do it. And then I was like, nah, you know what? It's, I think it's all right where it's at. I mean, I may eventually fill in this last seven-year gap whatever. whenever I left off. I may. Yeah, I got uh, two parts in. I didn't even listen to the third one. Yeah. I was like, I'm done listening to this. <laughs> I was, Breaking you down. Yeah, I, was like, I, I cried a little bit. Actually, I was like, God damn. So, and I was like, after I did that, I was like, I'm done. I ain't listening no more. Dude, I, I got messages from people that I will never meet in this life i will never meet them but they were like man i i was listening to your personal story and i had to pull over because i was crying too much to drive and i was like that's crazy like you don't know me what <laughs> like i just i couldn't it just didn't register with me that my that anybody would care about my story yeah you know what i mean I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, it's just one of the, kind of like how you were telling me a story of your life the first time you were on the show about your dad making you cut the grass with scissors. Yeah. And now it's become one of the best things ever because I'm literally, I'm dying listening to you tell this story. And you were just looking at me like, why is that funny? Like you just had this kind of look of pain on your face as you're reliving cutting the grass with scissors. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, I guess, I think it registered with you, like, oh, shit, that is pretty funny. That's yeah. not normal. That's so far from normal. It's so out of this world yeah. and shit. <laughs> yeah. And it's just one of those, like, unbelievable things. But, yeah, no, back to the back to the sexual assaults and all this. Now you got Louis C.K., and this is one that I have a problem with. So a lot of people are comparing Louis C.K.'s with the whole... Oh, he used his position of power and whatever to masturbate in front of women. I got to call bullshit on this because at some point, personal responsibility has to kick in, be a factor in the equation. Yeah. These were not children. These were adult women and who would accompany him to either his dressing room or his hotel room or wherever. And he never forced himself on anyone no. he did not force anyone to stay he didn't lock the door and make it to where they couldn't get out he would literally have these women come with him and ask them hey is it okay if i masturbate in front of you now is that creepy sure whatever yeah i've done it so. <laughs> i mean creepy does not mean sexual predator no and Again, these are adult women that decided they made a decision. He asked them and they made a decision to stay and watch him masturbate. And they could have left at any time. Exactly. 
this this contract can be null and void at any second and you can walk right out the door it's verbal it's not written <laughs> right and then they want to oh shit sorry I'm having a issue here with my tablet uh-oh. hold on <laughs> uh, no but they want to make an issue where there really isn't one the only issue should be well why didn't you leave yeah like seriously like that's okay i understand the whole victim blaming when they're when a girl does come forward about rape well were you leading him on why were you wearing that skirt blah 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 no this isn't the same thing that's i mean a rape victim generally tries to get away and they can't these women i want to look them in the eye and be like why didn't you turn the doorknob open the door and walk out of the room and get an elevator if it was if it was that horrifying to you if it was that traumatic that trauma is going to kick in pretty fucking quick your brain tells you this is the bad thing that's happening no instead they even said that they stayed because it was a, you know, it was so weird and comical. And I'm like, weird and comical? Like, so you were, you had a good time then. It's you like got a, some, you got some form of enjoyment from it. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're saying that it's weird and comical, well, I watch weird and comical videos yeah. all over the internet. I mean, yeah, of course, there's some shit that you can't unsee, but at the same time, uh, nobody's forcing me to watch it. No, I, I hit, I'm the one that hits play. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's pretty much, it's, okay, you see, if you go, if you stumble upon a porn site, you didn't mean to go there, and you see a video that has a description of what's happening in the video, there's a contract that you're signing by clicking play yeah kind of like if a man asks you if it's is it okay if i masturbate in front of you there's a contract that you're signing if you say yeah and you stand there and watch him and again that contract can be null and void at any to- at any time you can be like okay this is too fucking weird i gotta go dude I'm out. and you walk out kind of like if the video i'm watching isn't for me I'm not going to watch the whole goddamn thing. I'm not going to let you porn violate me. No. I, if I click play and it turns out to be two dudes, I'm like, oh, no, that's not my cup of tea. Stop. Find another video. Yeah, find another video. Now, I mean, Dirt Nat Dave probably see a video of two mm-hmm. dudes and he'd be like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It's like, where's a, the where's a, where's a cup at I need to hold? <laughs> Fuck you, Dave. Fuck you. I mean, that could have been Louie's way of telling that he liked her, though, you know? Like, because, like, it ain't, they might have thought it would be creepy as much as he doesn't know how to express himself, like, emotionally towards a lady. And that was the best way he could do it. Like, hey, girl, I like you. <laughs> stroke, 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 stroke. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I'm going to start asking Haley Fawn. Hey, would you like for me to masturbate for you? Yeah. That sound like something you'd enjoy? I mean, I did it for a girl. Haley would probably be like, uh, no, we can just have sex. Like, that's weird. That's another. Why didn't Louie just go for the home run? Well, and that's like you said, maybe, maybe he was insecure. Maybe he, you know. Yeah. He didn't know how to express himself. Right. Like, so, you know. I usually like text a girl nonstop telling her I like her. <laughs> hey, I like you. And I just keep saying that. And then she just eventually just says, stop testing me. I'm like, okay. But I just think she's playing hard to get. So I just wait a week or two. Then I hit her up again. <laughs> I wish that was a lie. Oh, jeez. She's playing hard to get, huh? She's playing hard to get. Now I got to try to get my tablet back on here. We'll see. If, yep. Okay. It's coming on. Hell yeah. But, uh. No, man, it's just, there's so much shit happening in the world that it's hard enough to prove 
without having other people making similar similar accusations or roundabout the same kind of accusations that first of all you can't prove like look just because four or five people say the fucking same thing doesn't necessarily make it fucking so yeah that's true there are tons of people that comedically believe in the flying spaghetti monster how many people actually believe in the flying spaghetti monster you know there's going to be at least 10 yeah probably be a handful yeah it doesn't necessarily make it fucking so Mm. just because hey look 20, 30 people believed that a fucking spaceship was coming to pick them up on the tail end of a comet and they all killed themselves. Yeah. I'm willing to bet because, I mean, their bodies were found right there with their Nikes or their New Balance and whatever. But uh, as far as we know, there's no evidence that any alien spacecraft was attached to that comet to come get them. Uh, There was supposed to be a planet that hits the Earth today. But scientists pushed it back because they didn't feel like the weather was right. It ain't scientists. Somebody pushed it. Scientists. It ain't scientists saying that a planet is going to hit the earth today. Well, somebody said it. Yeah, a whole bunch of conspiracy fucking nuts, and that's the problem. There are some conspiracies that I'm like, oh, yes, okay, that's, yes, this shit's legit. Like the assassination of John F. Kennedy. That was legit. Everybody knows that goddamn Lee Harvey Oswald did not fucking kill John F. Kennedy. And if you think that Lee Harvey Oswald killed John F. Kennedy, you're a fucking moron because Jim Garrison proved that shit back in 1960 or 70 something. Yeah. In court, he proved it. And they still decided to dismiss that shit. Then we saw it live on JFK, the movie. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Where Kevin Costner played Jim Garrison. Back into yeah. the left. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's all bullshit. But now you got people you got people that are like the Earth is flat, bitch. God, damn. shut up. They put the Earth was round when Aristotle or Socrates, Socrates. or somebody. Yeah. God damn it! They, like Copernicus, son of a bitch. Galileo Man, wasn't the first one. It's was it Copernicus. I think you I know, I've 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 really I've stopped believing so much in. In an actual Illuminati, the way that people, some people think about it, like where there's this giant evil cabal of people that are controlling them. Because the more, the more things happen and the more time goes by, it's becoming glaringly obvious to me that it's more likely that people are just fucking stupid. (laughs) People are dumb as fuck, man. Believe anything somebody else. Oh my God. Like... (laughs) First of all, you still got people falling for emails from Nigerian princes. Yeah, yeah. People are fucking stupid. You got people getting catfished on social media. How the fuck you gonna get catfished? If if I met someone online and after two or three times of interacting with them, they don't at least want a video chat. Bitch, this is 2017. I know you have video chat capability. I know you do. We were just talking on Messenger. That's video chat. Right, exactly. Just hit that little video button up there. Let me see what you look like. If they say no or that they can't, our conversation's done. Like That's how I would handle that. Hugh Jackman face over there. (laughs) (laughs) Do the Deadpool. (laughs) Do the Deadpool. Yeah, fuck yeah. I mean, how how in the hell do people get catfished? I mean, I understand. I understand that that deep longing and that wanting so badly for someone to be interested in you. Yeah. And we all want to get chosen, but there comes a time where you have to agree on what the fuck reality is. And you go, I'm being fucked with here. Uh, Yeah. Like, this is like a robot. (laughs) Like, Bitch ain't that pretty. Like Uh, I was on Tinder and I'll be swiping (laughs) And I'm like, this bitch ain't real either, because she's way too pretty, and she only got like two photos. <laughs> ain't no regular girl got two fucking photos. No. The regular girls are in there doing the booty poses and whatever the fuck else. I want to do a handstand. like <laughs> Shaking their ass cheeks in a little 10-second loop video. Oh, my video. God. I'll swipe right quick. <laughs> if you can twerk, you're my main soul. I'll tell you that much. You look good in a thong. But... Yeah, it's. I think I'm just falling more in line with the people are very gullible. P- 
people want to believe things that aren't true. Like I, I think it 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 boils down a lot to basically wanting it's it's that negative thing it's that negativity the negativity chasing that's what a lot of people do like they have to have that a lot of people i know have people on their facebook just like they got specific people on there just because they know that their lives are shitty and they have someone to look at it's kind of like al pacino said you point the finger and you say that's the bad guy it's kind of like that except it's the oh that person's worse off than me yeah i can feel good about myself again today at least i got a job yeah right like basically taking joy in the misfortunes of others yeah don't do that i i don't under i i I think i i can't i can't say that i ever took joy in the misfortunes of others though i used to dwell on negativity a lot like and i still i'm still very sarcastic and cynical oh yeah but now i try to at least push positivity out to people i may crack some dark jokes on you or something like that but I still want to leave you with something positive. I want you to feel good. I want people who interact with me to feel good about themselves. I want them to feel like they had a good interaction and like it's one that they want to have over and over again. Like, uh, no matter how negative I think about myself, I always try to have people think positive towards something like, I know shit's rough right now, but it's going to get better. Just Look, man, everybody's got their struggles. Yeah. Everyone. They, they, I don't care if, you look at somebody who's a millionaire and you think, man, that's the that's the life right there. You know, they can do whatever they want, go wherever they want. Man, look at Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey's fucked up. Yeah. Jim Carrey's like ba- constantly battling depression. Look at Robin Williams. Robin Williams had one of the most brilliant acting careers, best like one of the best stand-up comedy careers. He got to cross over into the movies and all that shit. Amazing. Amazing talent. And you never know what someone's there. All the money in the world couldn't save Robin Williams' life. No. Look at Chester Bennington. Dude was a fucking rock star. Nick and Bart guy. Yeah. Fucking Chris Cornell yeah. from Soundgarden. Okay. Fucking rock star. These guys, everywhere they play, it's sold out. People love them. Kurt Cobain. Uh, he kind of did the world a favor. <laughs> See, there's my dark cynical. I'm not a Nirvana fan. And I, I look at, if Kurt hadn't done that, we would not have gotten to experience Dave Grohl's true genius and brilliance and ability and the Foo Fighters and everything else that Dave Grohl can do. Dave Grohl is amazing. Uh, Kurt Cobain, in my opinion, look, I know a lot of people love him, but a lot of people loved him after he killed himself. Yeah, That's when the love came. You see that a lot. When Johnny Cash died, all of a sudden there's 500 million Johnny Cash fans. Well, when I was rocking my Johnny Cash shirt, nobody said shit while he was still alive. And then all of a sudden he dies and everybody's like, man, that's a sweet Johnny Cash shirt. And I'm like, thanks. I've had it for like seven years. The first time you noticed it. Good job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which could be the whole thing of, you know, it has to be brought to your attention. It's kind of like if you get a new car, if you get a new car, you start to notice your car everywhere. Yeah. You start to see other people that drive your car. It just It's one of those, now it's brought to your attention. Now it's a constant point of focus in your mind. And you're like, oh, man, that dude's got a car like mine. Oh, man, there goes one. There goes a car like mine. Maybe it's like that. Maybe like Grand Theft Auto. Every time you get like a car. Those get, several, those same cars start showing up more. They show up more. Mm-hmm. I always try to steal one car and keep that bitch. Because I know if I drive it, it's going to pop up more. Especially the, uh, like those sports cars, like the, uh, uh the, the Comet. Imports. Yeah. yeah. The fucking Comet was a big. Right, right, right. Then they had like the, the, I don't know, I can't remember the names, but the, the Lambos, they look like Lambos. The Infernus. Yes. Yeah. That motherfucker's so sweet. Yeah. But no, it's, there's, there's so much shit. So many people focus on the negative. I, I made a post about that on my personal Facebook the other day. I was like, you know. I can't imagine how exhausting it is for some of you that I see and all these people post are just negative things like whether it be political or just about their life in general or whatever. And I used to make posts like that to kind of draw people in on religion and things like that, you know, just to stir the pot, get a conversation going. 
and just kind of, you know, create a debate. However, I, I see, like, I would do it once in a while. You know, I'd get bored on social media and just be like, let's kick this hornet's nest, you know? <laughs> but I see people do this every day. Like, that's all they fucking post is Trump this or liberals that and blah, blah, blah. Dude, nobody cares about your political opinion. You know what? Let's pretend that voting works for a half a second. That's where your opinion matters. Those are the only people that care about your opinion are the people that tally the polls. Mm. That's it. Nobody fucking cares. You're not going to. That's why I had to learn about the whole anti-religious thing. You know, I would make fun of Christians and Muslims and whatever and Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses and Scientologists. And then I realized, you know, it's not accomplishing anything anything other than creating a negative source of entertainment for me. And so now I don't do it anymore. I'm still very, I'm very much a hardcore atheist. Very much. If you come at me with some bullshit, yeah, I'm going to shut you down. But as far as just feeling the need to post it all over social media and draw people into that. No, I, I don't need to do that anymore. I don't care. I don't believe whatever you want to believe. Here, here you go. Let's talk about beliefs for a second. This is how I feel everyone should look at beliefs. The entire world. And tell me if this wouldn't make the entire world a better place. You should look at everyone else everyone else's beliefs in this manner of, of three aspects. One, does it make them a better person? Two, does it help them get through their day? And three, at the end of the day, are they hurting anyone? Yeah. That'd be a good way to look at it. Because all them answers are more likely yes. And well, the last and one's no. And the last one's no. Yeah. Unless, like, you know what I'm saying, emo, because they motherfuckers cut themselves. <laughs> well, but, the, I mean, the problem is, even, like, even with Christianity, I know a lot of Christians who, they don't care what you think. That They know that I'm an atheist, and we're still friends. They know. My viewpoints are mine, theirs are theirs. That does not affect our friendship. You can have differing opinions on important things in life, which I don't even consider religion important in life. Neither is politics. My my opinion on what I'm going to eat today is more detrimental to my life than anything to do with religion or politics. Damn. Because what I put in my body today is setting the stage for the yeah. future. Yeah. Why can't more people acknowledge that and realize, man, we we put so much time into bullshit. You know why people put so much time into bullshit? Because the fucking media tells them to. Everywhere they turn, they're told what to think. And I understand people, for the most part, need to be told what to think and what to do. But there are some of us that do not. We can go about our day knowing what we got to get done. Right. That three foot circle, three foot rule. Let me get that. Straight. If it's not in my three foot circle and I can't control it, I don't give a fuck about it. Yeah. I don't care. I had to let it go. Like the climate can change. Right. What am I going to do about climate change? First of all, climate change is a naturally occurring event. Well, I don't even want to get into that. Fucking. Yeah. There's two different things there's global warming and there's climate change. And a lot of people think they're the same fucking thing and they're not. Do some research. Look that shit up. I promise you, you're going to be like, oh, shit, I was wrong. Anyway, yeah. I mean, that's why we had an ice age before yeah. when there was no industrial anything that fucking ice ages happen. The and then they up. thaw and yeah. then more ice ages happen. It and then up. it thaws. And then it cools down. <laughs> it heats up. Then exactly. it, that's the fucking earth. Yes. Yes, exactly. It's a cycle. It, we, it's, like, it's like a period for a female. I can assure you, we are definitely heading toward another ice age when it hits nobody knows that shit could come today or it can be 20,000 years from now or when that volcano erupts in Yellowstone <laughs> that motherfucker's close <laughs> that motherfucker's close 
this, yeah. it'd be like a 10,000 year ice age at that motherfucker. About? Yeah, something like that. Like, yeah, cause, because it's going to just block out the sun yeah. all over the earth. It'd be like, uh, but yeah. the other thing with that that comes with that, we're all going to die. We're, it's not going to matter about an ice age. Everything's going to die within like two to three weeks. You're not going to have sunlight. You need sunlight to survive. Vitamin D. Yeah, exactly. Um, all of the plants and animals require sunlight. So the plants are dying, the animals that eat the plants are dying, and us that eat the animals are going to die. We may we may last, I, I would give it six months in that circumstance, because we got canned goods and shit like that, and blah, blah, blah. but it ain't going to be a fun time. You're not going to want to survive it. Yeah, it's not going to be fallout. It's no. Not gonna be, yeah, no. Not, it's not going to be that. No. It's We're gonna not be- talking about a nuclear, no. a nuclear war. This isn't, no. If... What is it? If uh, yeah, if Yellowstone, yeah, dude, that shit. If that shit blows, yeah, we're fucked. Yeah, that sounds like a Super Bowl. Like, yeah. God damn. Oh yeah, it's done. Like what? Uh, fuck what was it? It was like two Hiroshima's or more. <laughs> fuck, I don't even know. Like, yeah, that's a lot of fucking shit. Like that's just one of those things where, if it's if it gets announced, uh, Yellowstone's erupting right now. Just eat eat a bullet. Yeah, it's done. Because of the radius of that, the first, the, the death range is like, you die immediately is like 500 miles from you, yeah. from the fucking ground zero. Yeah, it's it's just insane. That's like, from, I think, fuck, Yellowstone's like Wyoming or some shit, Idaho or some shit. I think it's in Wyoming. Yeah, it'd be like West Coast. Montana or something like that, I can't yeah, remember. On the board. Like, but, I mean, things like that, it's... In all honesty, a lot of people want to... Of course, humans think that human beings are extremely important. Nah. But but in reality, we are merely parasites on a really... On the back of a really big dog. Yeah, we would be eight. And she's going to get irritated one day and just shake us off. Like well, fleas, like a Taylor Swift song. Yeah, <laughs> Taylor Swift. I love her. T Swift, T Swizzy, and my extra small white T. <laughs> like we're all just a TV show, just waiting to be canceled. That's all it. That yes, that, yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, that was my, one of my favorite South Parks. Like, well, we don't like how it's going. Now it's going. No, 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 no. Then I was also on Rick and Morty with a Show Me What You Got. <laughs> There's so many fucking TV shows put the earth as just like a fucking failed sitcom. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's... All you can do, really, is if, if, you've, if you have a genuine sense of humor and you have at least a bit of self-awareness, all you can do is really look around at the world and laugh. Because if you try to analyze it and take it seriously, like conflicts with North Korea and conflicts with the middle east and if you try to take all this shit seriously your brain's just gonna fucking beat itself to death man you're gonna give yourself an aneurysm it, you, you can't take life so seriously you no. can't it, it, none of us are getting out of it alive yeah uh, how our president is like really really intelligent he lets <laughs> kim jong-un sweat his balls it's stupid dude it's no man have you ever seen a bigger pissing match between two impotent jerks of that magnitude uh, <laughs> I think I think that Dana White should try to jump on this and play to both of their egos and like Dana White from the UFC should contact Kim Jong Un and be like Donald Trump thinks he could kick your ass in the cage what that. what you tell round I, I meet him yeah. And then go to Donald Trump and be like, Kim Jong Un said he's going to kick your ass in a UFC fight. Well, I'm I'm the best UFC fighter ever, probably the best. I I've got such great submissions, probably the best submissions ever. The best submissions, nobody has better submissions than me. Yeah, exactly. I forgot what's being recorded. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a camera there now. I forgot about the shit. But uh, yeah, no, I think that'd be great. Yeah, it's put, like put Kim Jong Un and Donald Trump. In the UFC, in the cage, let them duke it out. I mean, like, I mean, they're both gonna blow up within thirty seconds anyway. They're gonna be, <laughs> but they it'll still know. be entertaining. Like Frank and like Frankenberry versus Booberry. <laughs> Who, who's gonna win? 
I, that'd be a great. Like, I think Donald Trump would get one swing in, halfway miss and trip over his foot, and then like <laughs> Kim Jong Un is like American president. Then he falls over too because he's out of breath just for saying that. Oh, I think the walk to the cage would exhaust both of them greatly. You know they're both gonna come out to the same song. <laughs> No matter what song it is, like that was a song I pit too. I know it was. That's why I picked it. Oh. All right. What do you think? You want to? Hey, I got a new segment for the show. Should I go ahead and do this now? Yes. Let's yeah. Do it. Hold on. Give me a second. Let me get uh, set up here for it. So, uh, I- I've developed a new segment this week. I'm gonna share some news from around the world with you guys, and uh, I like to call this segment. The Bulldog Unchained Crazy Train. That sounds way better than headphones. Yeah, right? So, uh, speaking of North Korea, a North Korean defector was shot five times crossing the demilitarized zone on Tuesday. He is currently listed as stable after two surgeries. Witnesses say the man was wearing a kilt, blue face paint, and they screamed freedom in a terrible Scottish accent before being gunned down. The North Korean military has made no statement to the comparison of their soldiers being the equivalent of stormtroopers as they fired over 40 rounds. In last week's Buffalo Bills game, a drunken streaker managed to run for more yards than the Bills offense, which isn't surprising in, <laughs> to anyone really, as the Bills have been struggling as of late. When asked for his comments, head coach Sean McDermott simply said, I think the front office should look into bailing this man out and having him show up for practice on Tuesday. Bella Vista Baptist Church in Florida. This is probably one of my favorites of the week. Bella Vista Baptist Church in Florida recently issued an apology for accidental sexual innuendo on their sign, which read, forgiveness is swallowing when you want to spit which apparently has now been replaced with get on your knees for the coming of the Lord. (laughs) And finally, Blake Shelton has been named sexiest man alive by people magazine, which simply means that whoever makes that decision has never seen dirt nap Dave in his purple thong. No. (laughs) And that's been this week's bulldog unchained crazy train. Well, fuck that, right? No, no, that goes. Hold on. Well, what's happening? What just... Uh, you hear this shit? Yeah. You see what I'm working with, people? It sounds this like is... fucking Cerberus is laughing. Sounds <laughs> <laughs> of Haiti. What just happened? There it is. Thanks, Ozzy. <laughs> oh, shit, that was probably the greatest Yeah, part. and anybody who thinks that I edit this show to cut out fuck ups or anything there you go there now you, you know it's, right it's all there it's all left i i'm too lazy to edit fuck that shit. it takes so <laughs> it, it takes such fucking long time it does you got 15 minutes of fucking like video footage it takes three hours of fucking <laughs> edit it it's like fucking shit yeah fuck that who has that time unless you're getting paid like just to do that job you know eventually when we're when we're making a good living from doing this show and we've got that kind of money i'm going to i'm going to find one of the best like film schools or editing schools and i'm literally going to get their graduating class like i'm going to get their list i'm going to contact the school and be like i need to know what students are graduating this year and i'm going to approach these kids one of these kids and i'm going to be like hey how would you like to make $35,000 straight out of college doing what you went to school for? Yeah. I'm like, fuck yeah. Right? Yeah. And you if, only get to spend like what, 10 hours a week? If that. If that, 10 to 15. Yeah. Just coming up with content for the show. Piecing together shit for us. Yeah. Like, that's it. And other than that, you get to hang out with us. Yeah. Which, that in and of itself is great. payment. You know, Dirt Nap Dave is fucking gone. <laughs> And wave at everybody. I don't know when they when these people meet Dirt Nap Dave. They're probably gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna need at least forty grand a year to oh, deal man. with this shit. Yeah. Like, can Can you put his gums away? <laughs> <laughs> Could you do that for me, please? <sighs> Dirt Nap Dirt Nap's gonna hear this. Be like, fucking these assholes. I knew it again. <laughs> <laughs> uh.
<laughs> oh, it goes back to the gums. <laughs> what a goon. <laughs> love him to death, though. Love him oh, death. yeah. <sighs> you know, I'm, he's... We're all we're all kind of the same. For, like, we're both... Or all three of us are... We have very dark, cynical senses of humor. We're very sarcastic people. Yeah. But we all want to positively influence and affect the world around us. Yeah. And uh, I don't want people to feel this pain. Like, I want you to be happy. Right. Yeah. Not feel this. That's that's just it, man. When people started messaging me about the Rob Walter versus Bulldog Malenko, it it really threw me off. And I was like, man, I, I, I didn't want to make people cry. Hearing, my, I mean, yeah, I broke down uh, in a few parts talking about it, but that's because it's deep, painful shit for me that I remember, and it's it's always there. And you know, saying it out loud, it, it hurts. Yeah, it does. It, it it brought pain, but I didn't expect anyone else to be affected by that. Yeah, you know what I mean. And so to evoke emotion from somebody else over some shit that you. <clears throat> happened to you or you came up with right whether it's a like a laugh or a cry or somebody spills milk through their nose it's just like <laughs> which that's the other thing i guess you know people listening to this show evidently get a lot of joy from it too because you know there's there's a lot of laughter based shit yeah. in this show like the, I, I gotta give a huge shout out to our filipino crowd yeah our crowd over in the philippines man i don't even know why they're digging this show. <laughs> <laughs> Do like a thirty second clip. I know, right? We we just put the clip up about the our fans in the Philippines, and we were just lightheartedly joking about Manny Pacquiao running the Philippines and all that bullshit. And and then I just you know I went ahead and created an advertisement off of that clip and did a little image slideshow, and man, they loved it. They flocked to it. You know that video or that that post has been seen over a hundred thousand times. The video has been watched like almost 22,000 times now. Son of a bitch. And there's only like four comments on it. There's only four fucking comments? <laughs> God damn it. You can't make that shit up. I don't, I don't right. know. Whatever. We gotta start talking about it. I'm the only country. motherfucker that can go viral and nobody says shit about it. Everybody's yeah. watching it. Nobody yeah. got shit to say. Because like, we say everything <laughs> in the video. Like, that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> I wanted to be like, Pacquiao runs the country. <laughs> I don't have to speak Filipino. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they probably speak English. I don't know. Yeah, they do predominantly. Like it's, they speak Filipino, which is, <clears throat> uh, it's a, it's a derivative of what's called Tagalog. That sounds badass. Yeah, but most of them also speak English. Also, that sounds like a villain on Street Fighter. Sagat Tagalog Tagalog What's your finishing move? Tagalog That's all you say <laughs> That's all he says Taga uppercut Taga uppercut Taga kick and balls There's people over in the Philippines right now like I will fuck you up <laughs> Yeah That's probably what they're thinking <laughs> Fucking, but they love us. Like all of those, all of those people were just like they came and liked the page. They, it, the the post has like over a thousand likes on it. They're plotting. What? <laughs> they're plotting. Right? Yeah. They just they're trying to bait us. They're, they're like, bait us we're over. gonna act like we love these fucks just to get them over here. And once they're here, we're gonna fucking kill them. We're not going back to America. They ain't gonna make it back home. Like, right? All, all I wanna do, all I wanna do. How is about I me. send you a hobo's dick cheese? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's some Tropic Thunder. Yeah. That was a good fucking movie. Yeah. Tom Cruise is Les Grossman. He's so <laughs> fucking great. I still, I still think that they need to make a movie simply based on that character and call it The Producer. From the origins of Les Grossman. Oh, my God. That would be so great. How many sexual assault charges would be levied against that guy? Oh, it'd be a lot. <laughs> it'd be a lot. You think that that character's kind of based on Harvey Weinstein a little bit? I think I think that's what he said it was. <laughs> I think that's what Tom Cruise said he based it on. Oh my god, that's funny. <laughs> that's the funny. Fucking hairy forearms and shit. <laughs> you know, whenever I went to see that in the theater, and yes, I went and saw Tropic Thunder in the theater. That movie's great. I, it took me like two minutes to point out, because I was like, who the fuck is it? And all of a sudden, I was like, that's Tom Cruise. 
Oh my god, what? <laughs> he stole that movie. Yeah, he's fucking great. He's like the movie is funny as hell. Anyway, he is the funniest thing in that movie. Yeah, we don't we don't negotiate with terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the key grip? Me. You? I want you to go over there and punch that director in the face as hard as you fucking can. <laughs> he just fucking did it. God damn. <laughs> Oh, that movie like the fucking ending when it goes like ah uh, the fucking apple bottom jeans boots with the oh fur. dude yeah and he's just dancing oh man that's fucking great and Bill Hader was his assistant <laughs> Bill Hader was great <laughs> dude Bill Hader's great in everything he fucking does big dick player wow <laughs> <sighs> the TiVo no Tucker Nuts gonna get that TiVo <laughs> Oh God! Please don't fire me. <laughs> oh shit! What else we got to talk about? Um, we talked about sexual harassments and all that good stuff. Oh, there's gonna be like three more Star Wars fucking main stories. Fuck yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, Ryan something Ryan. Uh, anyway, yeah, he's doing a, a three parter. You know what I'm hoping for is I hope they go Old Republic. Give us the Darth Bane trilogy. Oh, you're talking about the ones we haven't seen yet? Like, like Old Republic. Like the ancient, like, oh. yeah. Like this yeah. is way before, in, like, this is way before the Emperor was even alive. Holy like, shit. Yeah, dude, you're talking hundreds of years and thousands of years in the past. Oh man. Darth Bane was the original like the he was the one that created the rule of two for the Sith. Always a master and an apprentice, no more, no less. How how dude, I wonder how he would talk. Like a fucking gangster. Do you think so? Dude? What if like the Dark Knight rises Bane? No. That'd be so funny. Stop it. What about the Lego Batman? Because his name is Bane, so it's the, Stop it. You know when he goes on robot chicken, that's what they're gonna make him sound like. <laughs> Is Robot Chicken still a thing? Yeah. Is it? Do they still do new episodes? Yeah, every now and then. I haven't I haven't seen anything new from Robot Chicken in forever. Even if they don't do new episodes, they just keep doing the fucking Star Wars parodies. I would love them to death. I haven't... Uh... Hmm. Have you seen the Star Wars parodies? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Right. Yeah, dude. Robot Chicken, Star Wars, Family Guy, Star Wars. Those are... Those are like staples, yeah, man. They're they're cult classics now. Dude, I I laughed at them when I didn't watch Star Wars. I laughed twice as hard when I did Once watch. You saw- <laughs> I was like, this is so fucking great. See, that's so weird to me. Like, when did you first see Star Wars? Uh, last year, I saw all of them. You gotta be shitting me. Nah, I saw like everything from the episode, the first episode that came out. But it's like the four, four, the five, six, and then one, two, three. And one, two, three. Then I and saw then Force Awakens and, and um, Rogue One. Rogue, yeah. And when 8 comes out, I'm seeing that bitch. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't understand how people in America get into their 20s and haven't seen Star Wars. Well, I was going to watch Star Wars. No, how did you not see it as a kid? I, I, that I, doesn't make sense. I discovered porno. and I No, st- shut up, dude. <laughs> oh, how old are you? 29. Yeah, you're 29. Shut up. When you were like 8 years old, <laughs> when you were like 7, 8 years old... How in the fuck were you not curious about who Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker and all these people were? I wanted to be different. Shut up. <laughs> Stop it. How? How in the hell did you not know Star Wars? I knew there was, but I didn't know like the story behind it. How did you not see it? I, mean, I saw like previews. I didn't watch it. Was it? Probably because your dad had a had a his VCR you had to turn it by hand yeah. and crank VCR I was a remote <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, I don't get any up. any kid that's near the age of 30 or over was a remote was at a some remote. point in their life the only reason I had you is so you can change my channel exactly and get a beer get a beer <laughs> well, make me a sandwich mama's that mama no you you make the sandwich you make it spicy you put pepper you put sriracha on it mama. sriracha <sighs> Sriracha. Dude, they fucking they got sriracha everything now. Yeah, I was like, I was watching. Uh, I went, know there's people like me, and I'm gonna buy the fuck out of it. There's fucking sriracha frozen beef patties or chicken patties at fucking 
like I think it was that like Myers or some shit. They got now yeah, we see it's processed shit, man. I can't eat that. It I don't sucks. Know. But it's I was like ill. But I put sriracha on my chicken anyway, so uh. I don't need your nitrate ammonia bleach sulfide ridden chicken patties. Paint slime. Yeah, right. That you had to add coloring back to to make it look like f- fucking chicken. That you had to like fake put char boiled <laughs> grills on, like Burger King does. Right. They make real char grilled. Did <laughs> people know that? I yeah. Suppose. Flame <laughs> broiled. Over a light stamp. <laughs> that just tastes bad to them. like people will believe anything dude they they will people will believe <laughs> oh, somebody said it uh, it's easier to make a mass of people believe than it is to make one person believe well and it's easier to make people believe bullshit than the truth yeah people really people all the time say don't lie to me be honest with me bullshit you don't want the truth cause when someone gives you the truth Nine times out of ten, you are not prepared for it. You can't tell a girl the truth. You can't tell a lie either. You have to. Find you have middle. to become Switzerland. Yeah. And and be like, I, I don't have a dog in this fight. I I don't have an opinion. I know. Like yes, yes, your ass does look fat in them jeans, and it's 2017, so girls like that now. <laughs> 2007 girls did not like that. 2017 girls. Isn't it like crazy that. how things like that shift? Like, if you had a fat ass ten years ago. You were a fat ass. Now, if you got a fat ass, you think, guys won't leave you alone. You're going to get sexually assaulted. Like, in the gym is crazy. Them goddamn yoga pants and shit oh, fuck up fuck. your brain. It was crazy. It interrupts the workout. It does. I got to keep my I need down. blinders and earbuds in. <laughs> and they walk by. Like, this is one girl. Like, she got to be like fucking Aphrodite. Like, hands down. She's fucking Aphrodite. At my gym. I always wear like a little hat. Set as can be. It's probably like early 30s. Wears like a sports bra and yoga pants. Yeah. And like she's got fitted. Like her ass sits out. And she got. Looks like a shelf. Yeah. Like you could let sit your beer on it. Yeah. It's yeah. like crazy. It's like crazy. Yeah. And she's not thick. It's just that ass pops out. She doesn't skip leg day. She does not skip leg day. Right. Every time I see her, she's on leg day. I have no... <laughs> keeping that butt looking like that. How, how does she fucking work on anything else but leg? <laughs> she's doing squats and she's doing lunges with a fucking bar. Like... She's keeping that ass tone. She's keeping that ass tight. And she smiled at me. So now I think she likes me. So I'm going to test her every day until she gets mortified. <laughs> Just text her every day. Can I masturbate in front of you? You want, you, you want to see that? Is that cool? We can have a verbal agreement upon this. You can leave if you would like. Right. You can leave at any time. I'm not trying to sexually assault you. The door is unlocked. Yeah, it's unlocked. You can walk out at any time. It's even Don't open. Don't be trying to say that I raped you or assaulted you. Yeah. We have cameras just no. in case. I'm yeah. recording this. It's, yeah. There you go. Maybe even get a written contract. At what point are we going to get to... to <clears throat> that place where in order for a man to even take a girl out on a date, he's got to have some kind of written contract signed stating that she is consenting to go be alone with this man on a date for X amount of time. It's agreed upon who will be paying or if they will be splitting the bill. Yeah. Like, are we coming to that? We're not talking anymore. It's just hand over a contract. Well, look, people wonder why Tinder, why Tinder works. I hear a lot of people that don't like Tinder. They're like, I've never been on it, I, but I know what it is. I know what purpose it serves, what the function is. You want to get fucked? Get on Tinder. Somebody's going to fuck you. Yeah. <clears throat> but the thing is, a lot of people are like, I don't understand why there's a need for that. Well, why would you want to take the chance? Taking a girl out on a date, you read the wrong signals, you get mixed signals, you you aren't sure what to do, and you lean in to kiss her, and all of a sudden she's pressing charges for sexual assault on you. Yeah. Whereas at least with Tinder, that's the most honest fucking thing going apparently in the in the dating slash sex world. Yeah. Whereas it, you know what your intentions are, we're, we're going to fuck. Yeah. 
We're going for. We're not going out for a movie and dinner. No, and, that's it. no. We can say that, but that's not what. That's not what Tinder's for. Tinder is for you down to fuck. No, cool. Bye. Netflix. You down to fuck? Yeah, man. I want to fuck you. Yeah, I want to fuck you too. Yeah. Well, okay, let's meet up here, or this is my address, or what the fuck ever. Yeah. Okay. Let's meet in the ball pit at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> We have sex in the feces and needles. Oh, yeah. That'll be a fun time. After the lights out, we're not going to do it with the kids there. That's wrong. <laughs> that would be wrong. That's wrong. But when we come in in the morning time, they're going to find a little surprise in the family. <laughs> find a little surprise <laughs> in the ball pit at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Some extra DNA. Some extra DNA. Why are these balls all sticky? Like, why? They won't come apart. And it's, I can make a necklace out of them. <laughs> like Earl necklace. Yeah, you don't want to do that. But no, like seriously though, it, it is kind of concerning that yeah. it's coming to that point. And you have, I literally, I see it in my news feed all the time. Women talking about why men, why don't men want to, like, why can't I find a man? Why wouldn't a man want to date me? And blah blah blah. Well, maybe because now they're becoming scared. We don't or I mean, you could be a bitch too. Yeah, you could never. be a royal. Fuck, being self-aware is very important. Yes, and the ability to be—if you can't be honest with others, you at least need to be honest with yourself. Like, are you an bitch. extremely difficult person to get along with? If I ask you where you want to go eat, and you say I don't know, you're a bitch. <laughs> or you say I don't care. I don't care. You pick, and everywhere I pick, no, I don't want to go there. You're, you're about to get out and walk. Yes. You walk to Stop where you want to go. Yeah. And then and you call me and I'll come pick you up after I get done eating what yeah. I want. I want a fucking Big Mac and fries. <laughs> uh, you want a fucking lobster. Which one's going to win? Me. Because mine's cheap. I still can't pay for my Netflix. So which one you think is going to win? <laughs> fucking bitch. That's why you ain't got no date. Oh, shit. <laughs> the world's just in a weird place right place, now huh? it, it really is it's it's an odd it's an odd like, basket of fuckery it is it really but the thing is too i can't really say the world man because it's the u.s you, mm. you know they don't they don't really have these mind states in other places that are prevalent here nah. you know what i mean i don't have like like this whole, everyone should be concerned with liberal or conservative. Everyone should be involved. No, it's not like that in other countries. Like they just like whatever. We have an election every now and then. Yeah. People show up or they don't, and the right person gets voted yeah, in. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Like Bernie Sanders would have won that shit. <laughs> Free uh, we, dude. It, it doesn't matter. It's, mm. it's all shit. Fucking dog and pony show. I saw this who the fuck is Bernie Bernie said what people wanted to hear. When Bernie would have got in office, Bernie would have done what the fuck Bernie was told. Probably. That's it. As long as he just legalizes weed on Google. Or Bernie gets shot in the head. Back to JFK. Yeah. Yeah. I just want the president to legalize weed federally so it can be legalized like statewide. I don't even want it to be a big deal. That it's legalized. Like, literally, there should be a president that goes, Hey, look, we don't care about this anymore. Yeah, we have to do, we have to go through the legal channel and pass this through, but this is nonsense. The war on drugs has not worked. Um, and as of right now, if you are a non violent drug offender and you're serving a sentence, you're going to be pardoned. You're paroled. Non violent drug offender. Yeah. You're not hurting anybody but yourself. Yeah. Just get the fuck out of here. Of course, with the privatized prisons, we know that that can't happen. Cause, no. yeah, whatever. That's how anyway, they make our clothes. But the the whole drug thing. Now, I also look at it like this. I also, I don't have sympathy for drug addicts. It's and they want to call it a disease, and that's bullshit. Because you got a kid that gets leukemia. That kid did not do anything or make a choice. Of anything that led to them getting leukemia. No. You cannot pick up a bottle of alcohol. 
you made a conscious decision to do this and then say that you have a disease. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. <sighs> the same thing as picking up a crack pipe or a heroin needle or smoking meth or snorting it. No, you weren't born with this. Not at all. It was a learned behavior and you developed it yourself. That's not a goddamn disease. That's a choice. That's a habit. Yes, exactly. It's If you OD... Like this little, this little little peep or whatever you hear about this rapper kid. Oh yeah, little he peep. Like twenty, twenty one years old. Yeah, he OD'd on like Xanax or whatever. Well, fuck you, dude. Sorry. And yes, that's a little bit dark, but you did it to yourself. I don't understand this whole. Oh man, that's really bad. No, we should be sympathetic to drug addicts. What? No, he did it to himself. He did it. Don't give me bullshit about, well, he had a really fucked up life. Yeah, so did I. So did I. I was an addict. I admit it. Still here, though? Yeah. And I made the choice to do it. I also made the choice to stop. And I paid the consequences when it came time to stop. Withdrawal. Oh, fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah. And it was awful. Mm -hmm. I wanted to die. And it, it was one of the most heinous things I've ever been through. But... I didn't have a disease. I don't have a disease. It's that's a cop out. That's bullshit. It's not cancer. That's not HIV. That's not, you know, any number of fucking things that you can have. Bone marrow deficiencies, mm. fibromyalgia, multiple mm-hmm. sclerosis, muscular dystrophy, cerebral palsy. palsy. Yeah. That shit, those are diseases. Those are inherent in you. Yeah. Okay? Some are this, curable, some not. Yeah. Now, you know, okay, there are addicts do, that I do sympathize. Infants. Uh, when these kids are born jonesing, yeah, that sucks. I sympathize for babies who didn't make that choice. But however, that choice. however, the hospitals can monitor them, wean them off of it, and by the time... These kids are, are are grown. Like some of these kids will never know that they were crack babies. Like if the state came in and took them, placed them with a foster family or an adoptive family, these some of these kids may never know that they were crack babies. That's good shit, though. Right? Where's their disease? How come they're not fiending for crack every fucking day? Shut up! It's not real. Alcohol. You make a fucking choice. And that's the other thing. I could see if alcohol or illicit drugs miraculously appeared in front of you. No, you have to make a conscientious decision to go get these things. No. And then you have to make the decision to do them. That's not a disease. Uh, It's coming home from work. And we had some, like, my dude had some leftovers. And there was a homeless guy, like, getting panhandling on the corner. I don't know if he was panhandling. He could have been really, like, getting money just to... Get money. Yeah. Dude probably makes $300, $400 a day. Yeah. And you know what? If people fall for it and give him money... Look, there, there are some times that I give money. Yeah. And you know what? If they scammed me, good for them. That's fine. They obviously needed that money more than I did because they put themselves in a position to beg for it. I haven't had to do that. Yeah, me either. Not yet. Right. Yeah. But he uh, he he handed the dude his leftovers and like five dollars, and a dude walked to the gas station, and we was driving by, and we looked over and saw him, and we like, where the fuck is his leftovers at that you gave him? And like he like he was going in to get a beer, and he just threw the food away. Like, like that's what like that's what it looked like. Oh. He said he was going to get a fork, but there was no fucking. There was no tray in his hand, and he was going inside the gas station, and I'm pretty sure to grab, like, a cold brewskis or some shit. Like, you had food, homie. You could have got the beer, too. You had food, yeah, though, too. you had food, too. You could have got, like... That just shows you that dude, how, <sighs> how he's got a place to live. He's got food at home. 
He wanted someone to pay for his fucking alcohol. Yeah. He got steak tips. He got fucking <laughs> packed with protein. He would have been probably building muscle, <laughs> lifting up that fucking 40 ounce or fucking 12 ounce or fucking 6 ounce, 8 ounce, whatever can he got. Bicep curls with the 40 ounce, whatever the fuck you got. You would have been packing on muscle with the protein steak tips that we got. Right. 12 ounce cans, Miller High Life. Fucking Bud Light, probably Bud Light, because he looks like a Budweiser drinker. <laughs> oh, like, I can't stand. No, I can't drink that shit. Bud Light, Budweiser. Nah, I'm not a big fan of it. Give me a cool. Corona. I don't. I don't drink much anymore. I try not to. Here recently, I I was drinking White Russians quite a bit, but that's just because I bought the shit for White Russians and I didn't want my the the cream to go bad and all that shit. So. I used it up, drank my white Russian shit. Joe didn't play Borderlands. That's all that was. <laughs> Hell yeah. I think you should do a YouTube video of you drinking white Russian shit. Playing, <laughs> playing Borderlands. Borderlands? Yeah. Do either that or Rocket League. Because the people that I play Rocket League with, well, when I was playing, I don't even have time for games now. I haven't even got to play Assassin's Creed in like uh, uh, two weeks now. Ah, man. I know. It's such a beautiful me. game. Yeah. I'm on vacation now this week, though, so I do have to spend a lot of time on the show, but I'm getting back into that Assassin's Creed origin. Well, that's the a, that's a fucking uh, payoff right there. Yeah. Hard work, get a little play. Yeah, exactly. And some other little play. Oh, yeah. Wink, wink. Yeah. Haley Fawn, you better brace yourself, girl. There's going to be ass. some sexual assault. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to have sexual relations. <laughs> All the sodomites. <laughs> oh, you sodomites. <laughs> Flame coming out of your butthole. <laughs> That's probably still the favorite thing that ever happened. Oh, I need to create some sound drops for that, for that guy. Yeah. God damn. <laughs> yep, I need to create noob noob sound bites. And... I hope he's in the fourth season. <laughs> oh, he better be. This is a poopoo butthole. I hope he's in there. <laughs> well, shit, man. Oh. I think we'll go ahead and wrap this one up. Hell yeah. All right. I'm going to go home and go sleep. <laughs> all right. So follow us on all of our social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can literally just search Bulldog Unchained and find us. But go right now. Go right now to the Bulldog Unchained Facebook page. Find the t-shirt pre-order. If you're in the U.S., just click that link that's at the bottom of the post. It's for PayPal. The shirt is $25 total. That's shipping because it's twenty dollars for the shirt five dollars for shipping click that pre-order or click that link for the pre-order and in the message when you send the money be sure to include the size of the shirt you want and your mailing address all right go right now go pre-order the shirt now you don't want it oh hell yeah because it's sweet oh yeah sweet oh watch talk wrestling what watch talk no huh. no no <laughs> and uh you can follow us on itunes podbean youtube which now we're transitioning to the video side of youtube nah, that's gonna be exciting so, face with bill hashtag whoop. that's what everybody gets excited for everybody's like face with bill face with bill <laughs> all right guys uh we'll be back next week dirt nap dave will be back with us unfortunately so if you miss him it would be great to have him back uh, that one person in the audience yeah i don't even think cassie misses him. cassie's <laughs> like god damn it he's coming home today uh. <laughs> <laughs> all right um and also i think we'll put out that that point of positivity I want to I want to reiterate what I said earlier about the way that people should view other people's beliefs or whatever. Use that three question. Keep those three questions in your mind. One, does it make them a better person? Two, does it help them get through their day? And three, are they hurting anyone? If you can answer yes to the first two and no to the third, that's all you need to know. Just just. Shut the fuck up, mind be, your business. Be be good to each other, man. Yeah. Give people a smile. Say hello. Yeah. Just don't don't touch people because no, no. you're gonna catch an assault charge. Yeah, do not touch. Even if they yeah. say touch, don't yeah, believe yeah, them. don't. Yeah, it's 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 a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> All right, guys. I am the king of villains, Bulldog Malenko for Nubsy Slow. This is the Bulldog Unchained podcast. 
We'll be back next week. Yeah. Later. Later.